Welcome to Electron Line. So what is the density and pressure of a neutron star? Of course, the density would be for the entire star, and the pressure would be the pressure at the very center of the star. Because remember, we wanted to see if the strength of the forces that keep the quarks apart and that gives the integrity to a neutron, would that be overpowered by the enormous pressure at the very center? Now, density is relatively easy to calculate. If we know the size of the neutron star and we know the mass, then density simply becomes the mass divided by the volume. And the volume, of course, would be a factor of the radius. So in this case, if we take the mass to be twice the mass of the sun, which is probably a, big, a little bit bigger than average neutron star, then we take twice the mass of the sun divided by the volume, assuming that the radius is about 10 kilometers or 10,000 meters, so twice the mass of the sun, 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed, and we end up with a density of about 1 times 10 to the 18 kilograms per cubic meter, which is even more dense than nuclear material. And that's because the enormous pressure towards the center of the neutron star increases the density beyond what it would be under normal circumstances. And that's why we see this very high density. But of course, it's not quite as simple as that, because the neutron star is a lot less dense near the surface and much more dense near the center. And so there's this gradient on the density. Notice that at the, at the, at the surface, the density is about 0.3 times the average density. And towards the center, it is greater than twice the average density of the neutron star. So it takes a little bit of mathematics to try to figure out what the actual pressure is at the very center. How would we do that? Well, the way it would be done would be to take the weight of a slice and then integrate it over the entire column from the surface down to the very center. If you then think of it that the weight of a slice would be its mass times acceleration due to gravity, and we want to calculate the acceleration due to gravity anywhere along that column, we simply set the weight equal to Newton's laws of gravity, the mass of the slice cancels out, and we calculate the acceleration due to gravity, and notice that we have g equals g times the mass of the neutron star divided by the radius. Now, if we go into the neutron star, it would be the mass inside the neutron star lower than where the slice is at, and divided by the radius to that slice right there would be a small r instead of the big r for the total radius of the neutron star. With a little bit of calculation, we can see that the acceleration due to gravity is 4 thirds the gravitational constant times the density times the radius. Notice that the density increases as you go further down, so the, the density will increase, but the radius would get smaller as you go further down. So you have a number that increases, a number that decreases, and so we'd have to calculate the total, uh, the total force, the total weight of a column by simply integrating over that. We're not going to do that on this particular video. We'll leave that for our astrophysics videos. But essentially, when we go through the exercise to do that, we find that the pressure at the very center is about 1.6 times 10 to the 34th Pascal. And if you remember that the forces holding the neutron together, or holding the quartz together, was about 10 to the 35 Pascal. So you can see that the forces at the very center of a neutron star begin to approach the ultimate ability of the neutron to hold itself in shape, and the forces of the quarks that hold each other, that the, hold the quarks in position within the neutron are barely strong enough to withstand these enormous forces, these enormous pressures at the very center of the neutron star. So the average density of a typical neutron star is more like about half the number we calculated here because of the change in the, in the density throughout the neutron star. So it averages out to be about 0.5 times 10 to the 18 kilograms per cubic meter with the pressure at the very center almost at the limit of what neutrons can withstand, 1.6 times 10 to the 34 Pascal. And so that gives you an idea again that inside neutron stars, there are enormous densities and enormous pressures at work. And that is the way it's calculated. Does the heat change temperature? We would assume that it's much hotter at the center than it is at the surface. But again, that's all done by models. We don't know the actual. But just like with Jupiter, it's a lot hotter at the center than it is at the surface because 
the formation of the, of, the, of the planet Jupiter was such that it was very hot at the center initially and it takes a very long time to cool down. It's going to take billions and billions of years for neutron stars to cool down as well. If it cools down, why doesn't the brightness change? Because we don't really see neutron stars. They give off so little light, so little energy in the light spectrum that we, don't, we can't even see. We, we've never seen a single neutron star. Well, yeah, if you get close by, it would be very hot on the surface. Yeah, and you probably would see very bright light coming from a neutron star. Yeah, but you said that it doesn't change even... Necessarily. No, the neutron star itself doesn't change, but the temperature changes. So, yes, the color and the brightness of the... If you get close enough to one, yes, you yeah, would see it. you will see it, yeah. and you will see the change. Yeah, from that perspective, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, after a billion years, when it's no longer hot anymore... It would be interesting to try to figure out what would be the temperature of the surface of a neutron star after billions of years. So we'll look into it. But you'll get dimmer, right? Maybe we'll put a video together on that. <laughs> but that's the last one for tonight, right? Okay.